back in the bathroom and I want to talk to you a little bit about coordination of a bathroom remodeling. There's a lot of coordination and effort that goes into a bathroom and the steps are important. So I'm just going to break down some of these steps for you in general. We redesigned the bathroom for a walk-in shower with a half wall. The walk-in shower has a five inch curb and a copper shower pan that's going to receive a mud job and tile that will slope to the drain. The drain had to be reworked and we installed uh, a new American Standard shower valve and it's going to have a spray wand or a spray head as well as a, um, a shower head up high. We, we put it on an exterior cold wall but we drained, we pitched those pipes so that when the water is shut off on the warm wall the water drains out of the shower head so it's, there's never a risk of freezing. And that was probably the best location that we could do for the shower. The shower will be completely tiled. It's, it's protected with a, uh, an exhaust fan above that is on a moisture humidity type uh, uh, fan, a timer switch, a 30 minute timer switch. It's made by Panasonic, really nice fan. And it will have a Basco shower enclosure. You need to think about that kind of stuff. I knew I was putting glass on this on this wall, so I needed to reinforce it. So we did a series on how to reinforce a half wall. You have to install blocking on either end of the shower so that the glass wall can attach to that. You really need to think about this stuff. You have to install blocking for your shower wands. And then for the tub, we, we're doing an American Standard, an Eco Silent Tub, it's dropping. But we're doing granite surround. And I use 2x10s to make the frame. Yeah, I know, it looks like overkill. It's a lot better than using 2x4s and plywood because the plywood gives a little bit and it can break the tile joints or whatever. This is rock solid, solid. So the problem is we have to put our solid surface down first before we drop our tub in because trying to sneak the, the inside wall piece of granite in after the fact is very difficult. The other thing is this tub requires you to make a drain and a water line connection, which is actually right here. And you know, we could cut the ceiling below and do it from below, but it's difficult. And it also incurs other expenses and costs in another part of the room that really doesn't need to be touched. So that means we've got to keep this end of the wall open to do that. So we can't really tile everything before the granite goes in. So there are steps involved. You see what I'm saying? So I'm going to try, the next step is I'm going to try to get this granite installed. We'll do, the, we'll do the floor of the shower, we'll probably do our granite, we're going to do granite up the wall and along the half wall as well as up the jam wall and the curb of the shower. The tub will get granite. Once that happens, we'll drop our tub in, we'll make the connections, we'll, we'll do duroc and, and underlayment uh, for tile here, and then we'll finish tile in the shower. I laid out this wall with a laser so that it, it, laser, it levels all the way across to the opposite wall. So that's where our tile will line up. So everywhere the tile goes will receive a backer board for tile, like a Duroc product. Everything else above will receive plaster. The shower will be Duroc and plastered, I mean Duroc and tiled. And then as far as the rest of the room, there's, there's, a, um, there's a, a little built out here that we're going to do some sort of a little built in over here. There was talk originally about putting a television on there and now we're doing a recess cubby, whether it's storage or, or I'm not sure yet. But that brings up a good point. When you're ordering your tub, think about the orientation of your drain. Because where you sit will be opposite usually where the drain is, especially if the faucet comes out of that side. So you want to orient your tub in the way that you want to face when you're laying in the tub enjoying it. So if you want to watch TV, you got to make sure that you have a wall opposite of where you're sitting. For instance, our back is to this side, so we couldn't put a TV here. If we turned the tub around, we would have had to rework the drain and put it over there. You need to think about that stuff. Where is the faucet coming from? Is the faucet coming out of the deck, the granite? Is it going to come out of the actual tub? Is it going to be on an end of the tub or on the sides of the tub? Does it come out of the wall? All those things are considerations that need to be thought about before you do the work and the plumber and the contractor need to be involved in the process. The vanity. We're using a 60 inch vanity and we're doing a dual sink. It's really tight for 60 inches. 24, 24 and 12 in the center. We're going to center the sinks in the two 24s. Um, it's going to be a tight fit. It's probably just making it. 10 pounds of flour in a 5 pound bag but that's what they wanted. As far as the toilet, the toilet is going over here. We actually removed a uh, privacy partition to open up the room a little bit and then make room for the dual sinks. 
Um, I like to leave three, 36 to 42, 48 inches for a toilet. That's generous. Uh, you can do it in less, but you want room for the elbows. I think here we have 42 inches for the toilet. So all those things to consider for a bathroom remodel. And then we get to the, the, the floor and we're going to do a, a radiant floor heat, an electric radiant floor heating system by Warmly Yours. We're going to do a self-leveling pour over the floor heat to encapsulate the heat, protect it, and then we can tile over it. To do that, we're going to use a product called Edge Strips. A friend of mine makes them. Very innovative, very cool product. And I'm going to uh, write about it and I'm going to cover it in a different video. So we'll get into that a little bit more. But once we install that, then we can tile over that. The floor heat will be controlled by a thermostat over here in the corner on an inside wall. And it's a smart thermostat. It turns on and off as you program it. So you could turn it on and off as you use your bathroom. Turn it on for a few hours in the morning. Turn it on for a few hours in the evening, and it can, it can be off during the day or you know whatever you choose. And then finally, after the plaster is done, we'll start thinking about paint and fixtures and, and uh, toilet, toilet uh, paper and towel racks and things like that. So that's kind of the coordination thought process of a bathroom remodel. You need to really think through the things that you want to put in your bathroom and see you need to tell the contractor at the very early stages because everything is dictated by this stuff. Drain lines, water lines, blocking for securing things, uh, half walls, glass, built-ins, drain orientations and tubs and so on and so forth. All of that stuff matters and all of it needs to be thought out ahead of time. You need a plan. I wrote a very excellent article, How to Remodel a Bathroom, on my website at ConcreteCarpenter.com. Check it out. We'll see you at the next video.